Here we go. Hello, everyone. How y'all doing? Welcome to Sex Talk with Sharonda. How y'all doing today? Let's see here. We have a lot of great things we're going to be talking about today. I hope everyone had a wonderful Valentine's Day weekend we were super 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 busy i met so many of you all this weekend it was awesome dipped so many strawberries we sold out awesome um so i just want to make sure that y'all have y'all calendars because i will be doing dukes and boots on the 28th of this month this is not my event but i will be at the event hosting the event and it is an event that is open to the public so make sure you get with Tamika AO and get your tickets for that. We also have the tickets on sale on my website for March Madness, www.dppgstore.com. So make sure you get your March Madness tickets. A lot of y'all been signing up for the Ride em Girl class. I look forward. I'll be teaching that class. Um, and this is National Condom Month. So, of course, I cannot let February end without talking about condoms. And of course, we will be we will be preparing for steak and blowjob day as well. So I'm just giving y'all a chance to actually log on while I was getting that introduction done. If you have not subscribed to my YouTube, you need to do that. If you have not um, registered for my website, you need to do that as well. All right, so we gonna get started. So a lot of great things went on this weekend um, in Philly. There was a condom fashion show this was the third annual one that they done and i saw someone posted a picture of the ladies wearing the condom dresses and i think because sometimes people don't necessarily know what's going on people are like okay well what's going on well why are they wearing the dresses well what happens is you have the uh, companies that make the condoms they sponsor the event and they allow you to take the condoms and actually make fashions you can create fashion with the condoms which opens up the conversation about safe sex and preventative measures to keep down on STDs, unwanted pregnancies, and all of this kind of stuff. So it's basically a way to open up the dialogue for that type of conversation. Um, and the great thing is it's actually started by um, a, a young black uh, lady um, on Instagram. Her handle is Prevention Meets Fashion. She's like a social worker or whatever in Philly, but... Really, really, really great story that she has. So if y'all on Instagram, make sure y'all go check that out. Um, so let's talk about condoms, okay? First of all, all condoms are not created equal. We have flavor condoms. Then we have your standard. Well, this is actually your extra large condom. And then you have your magnum condom. So let's talk because a lot of times when people come into the store, they just assume that because it's a magnum condom that the condom is a larger condom that's not correct information this magnum condom is the same size as any other standard condom okay when you want a larger condom you got to get a magnum xl condom okay now lifestyle has actually came out with their large condom called king Okay, so let's talk about the difference between the two. It don't matter what brand of condom that you get, okay? When it comes to the circumference, they're all the same size. They're going to all stretch the same size. What makes a condom an extra large condom is the length that it will stretch, okay? 
If you are a 7.5 or smaller, you can wear an extra large condom, meaning that it will cover your complete shaft from top to bottom if you are 7.5 inches or smaller. If your penis, the length of it is beyond 7.5, that's where you need to go up to the XL condom because at that point, it will stretch out to like 11 for 11 inches, okay? Now, there are some companies that make specialized condoms because you do have some men that stretch beyond 11 inches, but they are, it's very few that, that goes beyond 11 inches in length, okay? So with that being said, when you're talking to your sons about condoms, the first thing your son really got to do is measure how long his dick is in order for y'all to get an accurate reading on the condom. And a lot of times men don't, they don't measure their dick. They just don't. They not like us. They don't, like, we get mirrors and all kind of shit. We open our legs up. We looking all in the inside because we want to see what it look like. Men just piss fucking go. They don't have, you know, measurements. So when you want to talk to your son about accurate information as far as selecting the right size condom, the first thing you got to tell him is, look, I ain't about to measure your dick, but you're going to have to measure your dick so we can make sure we give you the right size condom. When you got an erect penis, measure it. All I need to know is if it's 7.5 or less, then this is the condom we're going with. If it's beyond 7.5, then this is the one we're going with. Because what happens is a lot of moms do this. A lot of moms come into my store. We give away free condoms because we consider it a safe location. I say, oh, get many condoms as you want. So they be like, oh, I'm going to get some and I'm just going to stick them in this drawer or give them to him. But what happened if you're not giving him the right size condom, mama? What happened? You giving him a condom, but what happened if he not covering his whole shaft up? Are you really protecting him? No, you're not. Because <laughs> he can still get the little heebie-jeebies on the, uh, another little part that you ain't been covered up. And the thing is, he don't know. And he just like, well, she gave me the condom. Boys don't know that it's different sizes, okay? So this is some good information. I want you to make sure you're sharing it. And you, you need to really have dialogue with your, um, with your sons to make sure that they have the, act, you know, the, the correct size condom. Let's see. I'm just making sure I don't have any questions in the process. Okay, so let's talk about types of condoms, okay? We have some condoms that are lubricated. We have some condoms that are not lubricated. We have some condoms that have spermicide on them. But the thing is, a lot of times the guy doesn't necessarily know if the girl has an allergy to all of this different stuff. So ladies, a lot of times you don't know that you have a latex allergy up until you start having sex with a latex condom. If you're having sex with a latex condom and you're experiencing any type of dryness or burning or feel like you're getting swollen, that's an indication that you have a latex allergy. And that means not only can you not use latex condoms, but you cannot use toys that are made of latex material. You can't use anything latex because it's going to irritate you. So if you notice that every time I have sex and we use a condom, I'm just all toe up down there. It's because you got a latex allergy. And these are the things that we don't know up until we have sex. And that, that's, you know, we don't know that we have a latex allergy up until we start experiencing the allergy. What you need is a lambskin condom, okay? This uh, condom is one of the original condom made from lambskin. This is what they used to use years ago, Okay. For a long time, that's all I used was lambskin condoms when I was, you know, trying to prevent pregnancies. Lambskin condoms only help prevent pregnancies. They do not prevent against STDs. That's the downside to lambskin condoms. So that means that going to get tested is still important. Making sure um, both people have valid paperwork, current paperwork, all of that is still important. Um... So you want to make sure that if you get a lambskin condom and you, and you have a latex allergy, make sure that you have up-to-date STD tests because they do not prevent against STDs, okay? Then we have the flavor condoms. 
They come in all different flavors, bubble gum. This one is fresh mint, strawberry, all kind. This is strictly for oral sex. Because sometimes when you're meeting people, you want to have a certain type of sexual experience, right? Okay. But you don't necessarily want to put all a raw dick in your mouth. And then you may not want to suck dick with a regular latex condom either. So you want to get a flavored condom, right? And we're addressing this because it is National Condom Month, all right? Um, so I think that's about it with the condoms. Of course, if you need free condoms, the PPG store offers standard size condoms and extra large condoms, okay? So to be on the safe side, just grab a, a little bit of both, especially if you're trying to get one for, get it for your son. Grab a little bit of both and get them what they need. Okay, um, I had a few people that was disappointed this weekend for Valentine's Day. I saw one lady said that the man got her all this stuff from the Dollar Tree and put it in a basket. She thought he was trying to get her the coronavirus. Y'all, I could not stop laughing. The woman said he trying to give me Corona with all this Dollar Tree stuff. Then I just read what another lady set up for the whole weekend and her, her Casanova ain't show up. Things happen. Okay, things happen. And what we have to understand is, you know, if somebody gave you a gift that you didn't like, address it. Let them know, like, I have standards and you can't just bring me no anything. Because when I do something for you, I'm going to make sure it's nice. I'm not going to bring you no anything, okay? And for the young lady who, um, Casanova, whoever he was, didn't show up, it just lets you know where you got to place him in your life. Somewhere else. You know, like... You, you got to teach people how to treat you. I believe in that. You have to teach people how to treat you. Now, if you look up here, we got the blowjob surprise bag. Now, it ain't much a surprise bag no more, huh? Because y'all insisted that I showed you what was inside the bag. Well, these are the bags. And I'm actually going to add a fruit roll up in each one of my bags. So that means if you go somewhere else and buy a bag, your, first of all, your bag not going to come with a bill. But if you, get a bag, uh, if you get a bag from the PPG store, it's going to come with a bill. If you go anywhere else, that bag ain't coming with no bill. My bag is also going to come with a fruit roll-up because I believe that you're supposed to be given the ultimate blowjob experience for Steak and Blowjob Day. If you do not know that Steak and Blowjob Day is March 14th, you need to put it in your calendar, okay? You're going to hear me talk about Steak and Blowjob Day because it's very important that we celebrate the men the way that they celebrate us on Valentine's Day. Now, a lot of times what happens is a lot of women, they go all out for Valentine's Day. We had we had way more women coming in. And then they feel like, well, when he going to get a chance to do something for me? That was his chance to do something for you for Valentine's Day. This is day right here, March 14th. Valentine's Day is a celebration of love on, on for both people, if you ask me. It's just a way that you celebrate love, Okay. Um, but this is something special for him. Um, this holiday falls exactly one month after Valentine's Day every year. March 14th is Steak and Blowjob Day. Um, go online, go on YouTube, look up some recipes on how to prepare a steak. Contact your local steakhouse, order steak, do whatever you got to do to get the steak there. Some woman say, well, my, my man don't eat steak. Well, bitch, get him a lobster, get him some salmon, get him a pork chop. I don't care. Get him something that he like, okay? So, again, mark your calendars, March 14th, Steak and Blowjob Day. Then moving at the end of March, we have March Madness. You about to hear me talk about March Madness a whole, 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 whole lot. I'm looking forward to it. Yes, it will be in Baton Rouge this year. Yes, it is at a private location. All you have to do is go to the website and put your order in. In other words, get your ticket online. Yes, there will be table seating. It's going to be a good time. If you ain't never been to March Madness, ask somebody, okay? Again, if you have not registered for my website, go online and register www.dppgstore.com. Um, this video will go up on YouTube. So if you too shame to talk to your little boy about the proper way to you, you know, measure for condoms and stuff, Say, baby, watch this video so you can understand what you need to do when it comes down to uh, measuring yourself for a condom. And another thing we want to stress to our sons and daughters is please use lubricant every time you have sex. Get out this myth 
that you get wet enough. Get out this myth that something is wrong if you're not getting wet enough. You should be using lubricant every time you have sex because lubricant provides a barrier. It basically protects the skin. It keeps you from chafing. It keeps you from getting irritated. It keeps the vagina from tearing. It's so many benefits to using lubricant. So get out that foolishness talking about I get wet enough. Yes, your body does get moist. But you still need a good lubricant while you're having sex, okay? So we want to make sure that we're teaching all of this great information to our children as well, all right? And the last thing I'm going to talk about, so a question came about, and I was asked, how do you feel about your teenagers having sex in your home so that you know that they are having sex in a safe space, Okay. So I was reading from the point of view of one of the mothers and she said that she would much rather her son have sex at home because she does not want her child life put in danger because um, he's having sex with somebody's daughter and their dad comes home and tries to harm her child for partaking in um, something consensual with another young lady that's you know his age or whatever and I was like you know what I never really thought about it like that um I was listening uh to some talk radio and it was the parents that were basically saying that they give their uh kids permission to have sex in the home now keep in mind you know we down south a lot of times when we listen to talk radio these people be from everywhere else a lot of more progressive parts of the country, a lot of forward thinking. And it just really made me think. Um, I saw a lot of y'all comment that, you know, the young adults are going to do it anyway. Um, and all of this kind of stuff. And I'm going to just say it like this here. I, I can't ever see myself being comfortable with granting my children permission to have sex in my home. I just don't. And I just feel like you got to do the shit that I did. Like, we had to go get motel rooms and shit. We even was going to get the crackhead motel rooms, the two for 20, two, two hours for $20, however that shit was back then. And, you know, like, we made a way to do the shit that we wanted to do, but I don't ever see myself just being so liberal to say that you could come and lay up in here and fuck just like me. I don't. Um, because I, I pay the cost to run my household the way I run my household. And I just really feel like, and this is just my opinion because I was asked for my opinion about the topic. I just feel like when you start making certain things okay in your home, you can't get upset when a certain level of respect is kind of broken down. Meaning that when they start walking around there thinking they as grown as you are, it's because a lot of times you've broken that, you, you broke that boundary. OK, I don't tell people how to run their households, but I just feel like, you know, it's it got to be a certain type of order in every household. Now, if my daughter is married and I'm just going to say she comes to visit for the holiday, quite naturally, you and your husband may have sex in my house. And I can give two fucks because that's your husband. And if y'all have sex, then that means that he's responsible for everything that comes along behind that sexual act. But it's a little different when you're dealing with minors and giving them permission to have sex in your home. And I'm going to take it even a step further. When you saying that you give permission, you know, a lot of times you may give permission for your son to have sex. But then, you know, you made it so easy. Now you got this young girl coming in. And what happened if she say, well, something happened that I didn't consent to, you know. So it's all kind of things that you have to, to you know, take into consideration when we talking about being okay with our children laying up in our households. Like I'm a very progressive person. I'm a very liberal person, but I also have my own set of boundaries and it's just some shit we not doing at all under no circumstances. Okay. So that's my little two cent on that. Uh, again, question, concerns, comments, make sure you send it to my email okay if you have anything going on with like you know you place the order and you want to track shipping and all of this kind of stuff 
My inbox is not the best place to reach me. If you want to be guaranteed a response, please email me at only one, and that's the number one, ppg at gmail.com. Make sure you are registered on my website, and that is www.thepgstore.com. Make sure you subscribe to my YouTube, um, and that is Sharonda Parker. We are almost up to 5,000 subscribers, and I've told you, once we hit 5,000, I'm giving that basket away. There's a freak basket with a sex wing that I'm giving away, shipping to whatever part of the country I need to ship it to, or wherever I need to ship it to in the world. It's getting shipped, okay? Because I have to stop staying in the country because we actually have an international following. So I'm going to ship it anywhere in the world to get it to you, okay? You all be blessed. That's going to conclude Sex Talk with Sharonda. Y'all have a good one.